David could have found a way to run. David could have given up. David could have curled up in the corner and waved the white flag of surrender. David did not give up. He was distressed, but he did not give up. He was stressed, but he did not give up. He was perplexed, but he did not give up. But what David did is that David encouraged himself in the Lord. There are so many stories similar to this in the Bible. Many people choosing to give up because they have lost their strength. They couldn't go on anymore, but they encouraged themselves. God helped them to get back on their feet. When God created this world, he created everything to be easy and smooth for all of us. But when sin came, it reshaped the world. Since sin came in, you and I know this fact and this reality. Jesus knew about this world. He knew there would be nothing easy in this world. He told his disciples about this in John 16, 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulations, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Jesus told them the truth about life. He assured them of victory. So today I want to ask you, what are you doing right now? The challenges that you are facing are a part of life. That is how this world has been redesigned by sin. David encouraged himself in the Lord when he was faced with challenges, when he was alone, when he had no one else that he could count on, when everyone that should be there for him turned their back on him, he encouraged himself in the Lord. What are you doing? Are you discouraged and you want people to pity you because of the challenges you are facing? This is the time for you to stand up on your feet and encourage yourself in the Lord. Don't wait for other people to come and pity you. Don't wait for other people to come and save you. Don't wait for other people to come and give you a helping hand. There are moments in life when you need to be your own support system. You were not made to be pitied by anyone. You were made to show strength to everybody. Be strong in the Lord. The Bible, the Bible called you a royal priesthood. You are a child of God. You should not be discouraged by what is happening in this world. You should be strengthened. The truth is, life is full of battles and challenges. The challenges that you are facing today are stepping stones to the life that you will have. There will never be a warrior without battle. There will never be a victory without a fight. There will never be a conqueror without a conquest. Just because you fall down doesn't mean it's over. Micah 7, 8 Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. This person was very strong to shout this at his enemies. He was sure that his fall is not the end because he knew God will always be there to raise him up. And that's something that needs to be in your soul and needs to be in your spirit and needs to be in your mind. God will raise you up when you fall. When the world is against you, you should know that what is important is that God is by your side. Romans 8.31 what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, if God is for us, who can be against us? We all know the wonderful story about Elisha and his servant. When the Syrian army came with their horses and chariots and Elisha's servant was terrified, a whole army with battle-ready soldiers was there ready to take over. The servant was confused and afraid. We see in 2 Kings 16 the following, and he answered, this is Elisha speaking, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. This statement did not convince the servant until Elisha 
asked God to open his eyes and he saw he saw the mountains full of horses and chariots of fire are you complaining about your situation you are wasting time complaining if only you knew if only you can ask God to open your eyes and you will see the God that is for you is much greater than the situation that you are facing then you'll be bold and strong to face whatever you have to face today don't you understand that you're a child of God God is on your side I know what the situation looks like I know it doesn't look like it will end well but God is on your side that's what I've come to remind you today if God be for you who can be against you let the odds be stacked against you let the world turn its back on you let everyone boo you let them try stop you their efforts are meaningless when God is involved just know God will never leave you this is a word of encouragement to all souls that are troubled and feeling like it's over God says in Deuteronomy 3 6 be strong and of good courage fear not nor be afraid for the Lord thy God for the Lord thy God he will never leave you nor forsake you God is not a liar he cannot tell you this and then fail you. He doesn't fail. He said you should be strong. He said you should be courageous. He said you should be not afraid. The time you are using to complain and to question God's promises. Why don't you use that time to believe in God? Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. He was not afraid because he knew what his God was capable of doing. The three Hebrew boys were thrown into the burning fire. They were not afraid because they knew who their God was and is. Your lion's den, your own burning fire might be sickness. It might be unemployment. It might be hatred from people. It might be failure. It might be some unpleasant situation. It might be divorce. It might even be the year 2020 or it might be another big challenge that you are facing this year. I want to remind you that Daniel remained calm and strong. The three Hebrew boys were bold enough to reply to the king. That means you have to be bold too. In 2 Corinthians 3.12, Paul says, Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold this means that if your hope is in christ jesus you will be bold and fear not the enemy will throw everything he can at us as christians to get us to stray from god to join him that is why Paul tells us we must endure hardships as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. It will not be easy for us, but we must press on fighting the good fight of faith. We cannot afford to sit back and just take what the enemy brings our way. We can't let the enemy win. We must fight back, not physically, but spiritually. The Bible tells us this and instructs us to put on the whole armor of God. The helmet of salvation must be kept on at all times. The purpose of the helmet is to protect the head. And what I really mean is the mind. Now we know that the mind is the battlefield where the war is fought. Injuries to the head are to be avoided. As a Christian, you need special protection to your mind. Now a helmet is something that you put on. It does not come on the head automatically now that you are saved. Philippians 2.5 Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Romans 12, 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. As a Christian, we must fight the weapons the enemy uses known as fear and doubt. We must know that all things work together for good. As a believer, 
I need to have good expectation on God's promises concerning my life, my children, my family, my business, and my relationships. This will give me peace of mind. First Peter 5.8 Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The life of a child of God must be sober. The life of a child of God must be vigilant. We must always be on the lookout. We must always be conscious of the adversary. Our adversary, the devil, wants to sneak in at an hour when you least expect it. He's not going to announce that he's going to attack tomorrow. When Jesus was in the wilderness, he never announced to him, I am coming. When the adversary went after Job, he never announced to Job he was coming. He wants to sneak in at an hour when you least expect it. That's why we are told clearly in 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober, be vigilant. We all know what the Bible says the devil comes to do. If you don't know, I suggest you read John 10, 10. The Bible said, whom resist steadfast in the faith, ever be diligent, ever be on the lookout. Child of God, be sober. Child of God, be vigilant. Child of God, be prayerful. Child of God, the Bible tells you to watch and pray. These are all spiritual things you should never stop doing. These spiritual things feed your spiritual life. Don't ever stop praying. Don't ever stop meditating in your Bible. Don't ever stop praying. Don't ever stop meditating in your Bible. As a child of God, we are told that it is a fight for us. Ephesians 6:12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. It's not a fight with humans. We as humans, we are meant to love one another as we love ourselves. But in terms of progress in your spiritual life and even in your natural life, you will have to fight. There is a quote I read which states, be kind, for everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. You have to fight to believe. You have to fight to have faith. Hence why the Bible tells us, fight the good fight of faith. You have to fight the devil. Hence why the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. You have to fight to endure. Hence why the Bible tells us, therefore we must endure hardship. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ, you have to fight to keep going. You have to fight to not give up. You have to fight to pay bills. You have to fight to put food on the table. You have to fight your fears. You have to fight your doubts. You have to fight your anxieties. You have to fight your past. Be kind, for everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. Everyone is in the middle of a fight, whether it may be with the devil or whether it may be in everyday life, you will have to fight. If you are old, you have to fight. If you are young, you have to fight. If you are rich, you have to fight. If you are poor, you have to fight. I am here today to encourage you today don't quit. Don't give up. Child of God, don't you dare give up. You are a child of God. The royal blood of heaven is flowing in your veins. In Christ, there are no losers. In Christ, there is no defeat. God created you. God fashioned you. And God does not manufacture junk. You are a child of the Most High God. You're not going to be the victim. You're going to be the victor because Christ is Lord over your situation. You are the head and not the tail. Whenever you are facing a mountain too big to be moved, 
Remember you serve a mountain moving God. Whenever you are facing a giant too big to overcome, remember you serve a giant overcoming God. Only believe all things are possible for you. I think you have forgotten that we serve a God that cannot fail, who has never failed, who has promised us that if we call upon him, he would show us great and mighty things. God is on your side. God is with you. There may be times in your life when hell throws the kitchen sink at you. 2 Timothy 2.3 says, You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You should consider the example of Jesus. Look at everything he had to endure. And through it all, in the end he was still standing. He fought the good fight of faith. He endured the cross. And you need to fight the good fight of faith. You need to endure the battle that you are in now. The verse says, you therefore must endure hardship. The road is not easy. That is why you must fight. Fight to endure. Get through. Hold on and survive in this Christian life. It doesn't matter who you are or who you know, whether you're rich or poor, if you're from the east or the west, hardships do not discriminate. Tell yourself, I'm still on my feet. Tell yourself, I'm fighting the good fight of faith. Tell yourself, I'm still enduring. Tell yourself, I'm still standing. Tell yourself, I will not bend, bow, or burn. Tell yourself, through Christ, you're looking at the winner. There is a video I saw, and it spoke about the importance of encouraging yourself and not waiting around for people to do it for you. It said, God did not bring you through all the hell you've been through to leave you right here. Tell yourself, Isaiah 54, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Tell yourself, Deuteronomy 28, I am the head and not the tail. Tell yourself, Psalm 18, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Tell yourself, Psalm 20, some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord. Tell yourself, Romans 8:37, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Tell yourself, Romans 8.31, If God is for me, who can be against me? Tell yourself, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Tell yourself, Matthew 17.20, Our faith can move mountains. Tell yourself, Job 13, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. That is the truth. In whatever fight you are going through right now, you have to encourage yourself, just like David did. David didn't look to anyone else to encourage him. David encouraged himself. Keep fighting. Keep fighting and never give up. Keep working. You have to pull out your determination and keep going. You have to pull out your will and keep going. God will not let you down. He will never leave you or forsake you. Remember, God is for you, not against you. You need to keep fighting. You can do it. Through Christ, all things are possible. The devil does not stand a chance. The devil never stood a chance. What you don't know is that even in your weakest state, you have more than enough power to destroy the forces of darkness. You may struggle, but that does not change. You are more than an overcomer. Losing is not a possibility. If you were to entertain the multiverse theory, which we don't, but to get my point across, 
there would not be a single universe in an infinite number of universes that would result in the devil winning. It is not possible. So don't give up. You can't give up. Never give up. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going, child of God. Here is what God is tired of. God is tired of his children giving up. Every time some adversity comes our way, we give up. You might be going through your darkest moment. You might be going through hell and high water. But I encourage you to keep going. To keep going. The Bible does not encourage giving up. If you need to work two jobs, work two jobs. If you need to sleep six hours instead of eight, do it. Make whatever adjustments you need to do to ensure your best chance of succeeding. God will give you the strength if you trust in him. Remember the Lord is your strength and your song and he has given you the victory. Isaiah 41 verse 10 Do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. There is a reason why God says his strength is made perfect in weakness. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That is the Holy Spirit that is inside you. The spirit of power. The odds may be stacked against you, but God has given you the spirit of power. The dream inside you may be bigger than your ability, but God has given you the spirit of power. Building your company from scratch may be bigger than your ability, but God has given you the spirit of power. Raising those kids alone with no help may be bigger than your ability, but God has given you the spirit of power. Restoring your marriage may be bigger than your ability, but God has given you the spirit of power. The job you are applying for may be bigger than your ability, but God has given you the spirit of power. The house you are believing in may be bigger than your ability, but God has given you the spirit of power. You have the Holy Spirit inside you. You are more than a conqueror. And I am here today to tell you to stop putting your own limitations on God. The second you limit God is the second you start to fail. The only limits in your life are the ones you put on yourself. Because God has no limits to his greatness. He has no limits on the things he can help you achieve. So stop limiting God. He is without limit. His power is immeasurable and his grace and mercy is without end. God has given you the Holy Spirit, the spirit of power. Therefore, you are more than a conqueror. You are able to succeed where others fail. You can soar where others fall. Reach the heights that you thought were never possible. First Corinthians 1, 26 through 29. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. One of the most wonderful characteristics of God is that he is all-powerful, all-wise, and sovereign. Yet, when you read the Bible, he uses the unwise, the reject, the weak, the low, and despised. The world celebrates the wise, the valiant, the mighty, the high, and the loved. However, God doesn't. God uses misfits, 
rejects, and outcast. God summoned Samuel and sent him on a mission to anoint a king that he had chosen. He was told to go to the house of Jesse, and there he would find the man that God had chosen. Jesse paraded Eliab, Abinadab, and Shammah before the prophet, but they were not met with God's favor. Another four sons were brought out and still, God did not sanction any of them. In all the show and tell that was happening, God had this to say about his perspective. The Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. We tend to inform our choice in certain matters based on what we can see. In 1 Samuel 16, God chose a young boy who was almost forgotten. He was out in the fields tending to sheep. He was the eighth and forgotten son. Imagine, Jesse brought out all of his sons except David. Jesse saw the characteristics saw the king inside all seven of his sons, except David. David was rejected by his own father. It is an awesome assurance to know that those of us who weren't chosen by man can be chosen by God. When we are forgotten by men and not invited to the table, God remembers us. When the prophet tried to pour the oil on all seven sons of Jesse, the oil would not pour. So Samuel asked, do you have another son? David was finally called and the Lord's approval was revealed when he told Samuel and the Lord said, arise, anoint him. For this is the one. God's man wasn't the oldest, may not have been the best looking. He was not the one thought of as the champion. The God we serve elevated those who are made low by society. God is omnificent and sovereign. And our next outcast is a demonstration that God will allow negative things to happen to us so that his purpose can be manifested in our lives. Joseph had a few bouts of rejection. He was sold by his brothers, lied on by Potiphar's wife and placed in prison. Sometimes we are trusted by God to undergo hardships so that his choice can work for the good of others. God must have looked at Joseph's heart and seen the humility necessary to accomplish his purpose. Remember that God is keenly examining the posture of our hearts. Even when we are going through hardship, Joseph demonstrated the inner value of humility, even though he was looked down on. Sometimes being rejected and cast out can humble us, but this is different from having the characteristics of humility. Joseph possessed the right posture in his heart, not just when he was rejected by man, but also when he was promoted by God. More than 10 chapters after he was sold into slavery, some two decades later, he declared, you meant evil against me, but God used it for good. When we are rejected, despised, brought low, thought to be foolish, 
made weak. We must demonstrate inner fortitude in the confidence that God has not given up on us. Joseph knew that it doesn't matter what man did. God ultimately would lift him up. Let us embrace the goodness of God. Moses is another prime example of a misfit. He was in the seat of power in Egypt. He had been raised an Egyptian prince, but at a crucial point in his life, refused the blessings of the house of Pharaoh and by faith chose Yahweh as his God. Despite this noble act, Moses was rejected by the people of Israel. This Moses, whom they rejected, saying, Who made you a ruler and judge? His predicament went even further because he didn't think he was worthy either. In his own words, he was a misfit. Many of us have self-defeating thoughts because we have been rejected by man. When God chose to use us, we make excuses because we view ourselves as rejects, misfits, outcasts. Moses said to God, Oh my Lord, I am not eloquent. I am slow to speech and a slow tongue. I am here to tell you that you are not too despised, too weak, too slow, or too low for God to use you. Our inabilities do not disqualify us from the service of God. Our inabilities do not disqualify us from doing amazing things. What a wonderful thing to know that God created you to be different. To know that God has not created you to fit in. God has set you apart. That's why you have felt like an outcast. God has a wonderful habit of using rejects and misfits. Moses was rejected by the Egyptians and rejected by the Israelites. Moses had a stutter and could hardly speak, yet God chose him to negotiate with kings. God is calling you today for bigger things, things that you don't think you are capable of doing. God loves rejects, and some of you listening to me may have lived your whole life with a feeling of rejection. And as I was reading the story of David, I am sure some of you could empathize with David because you have even felt the rejection of your own parents. As I am speaking to you, you may even say that you are talking to me. I have never seemed to fit in anywhere. I've always felt a bit awkward, different not attractive, an outcast. I just want to remind you, God loves you even if you don't fit in. Not fitting in is a normal part of many people in the Bible. Rejection is a normal experience for people God has chosen. Jesus is the chief example of all that we have considered above. Isaiah 53, 3 stated prophetically, 
he was despised and rejected by mankind. A man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hid their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. When he came as the incarnated word, we are told that he came to his own and they didn't receive him. He was beaten, mocked, murdered, and put into a tomb. The people were given the option to choose Jesus Christ or Barabbas, and they shouted for the release of Barabbas and the crucifixion of the Christ. Take consolation in the fact that God has now exalted Jesus Christ. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name above all names. Those of us who are considered rejects, misfits, and outcasts have an assurance from the witness of the Bible that God has a use for us. We are chosen in Christ before the foundation of the earth. God has promoted us and has given us the noblest of callings. There is no higher place to be than under the anointing of God. There is nothing more valuable than being considered of worth to God. There is no greater promotion than to be in the place of God, as Joseph proclaimed to his brothers. Stay humble, my friends. God is looking at our hearts. Make sure you subscribe to the new Line of Judah Prayer channel. Click the link in the description. When Joseph was a young man, he had a dream that his brothers would bow down to him. They hated him when he told them the dream. He then had another dream showing not only his brothers bowing to him, but also his father and mother. His brothers were so angry that they wanted to kill him. Instead, they threw him into a pit, sold him as a slave. He was then falsely accused of a crime by his master's wife and thrown into prison. Joseph had to endure many hardships over a span of 14 years before he received vindication, justice, and freedom. He had to wait over 14 years to see his dreams fulfilled, becoming the second in command of Egypt. Unfortunately, we live in a culture where people do not want to wait 14 minutes for the dream God has given them or for what God told them. So, when you have something that you're believing God for, when you have a promise that you're waiting on God to fulfill, when God has given you a dream from heaven, but you keep waiting and waiting and nothing happens, what do you do? When it has not come to pass yet, what do you do? What do you do when the situation keeps getting worse? When you are living in uncertain times and you haven't gotten married yet? You haven't gotten that house yet? You haven't gotten that promotion yet? You haven't got your breakthrough yet? Or whatever you're waiting for? has not happened yet. Unfortunately, 
Some of you are getting frustrated and upset and mad because God is not moving on your timetable and on your clock. You must have faith in God. He has your best interest at heart. It is not random. It is a part of his plan. Dare to trust him. I wanted God to do it my way, but God had a better way. You have to have faith that in due season and due time, God somehow, some way, is going to step into the domain of your promise and make that promise come to reality, come to fruition. God can see things that you cannot see yourself. His plan for your life is bigger than your plan, but it may not happen the way you thought. God does not take us in a straight line. There will be twists and turns that are all a part of his plan. But if you have conditional trust, you will get discouraged and think, why is this happening? But you have to have confidence. You can't be doubting. You can't question him. Deep inside, you've got to have faith in him and to know that you know that you know. This is the type of faith that moves God to act. God said, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently, diligently seek him. There must be an earnest diligence in our heart if we are going to touch God in faith. And the Bible then talks about the just shall live by faith. It's a way of life. Everyone at some point in time is going to have to live by his or her faith, not my faith or someone else's faith, but their own faith. You're going to have to stand on your own faith. You are going to have to build your life on your faith and endure your trials and afflictions by your faith. You will have to overcome the mountain that is in front of you by your faith. What mountain? Well, that's your trouble. That's your heartache. That's your sorrow. That's your burden. That's your... That's the thing that you're facing. That's the thing you're crying about and fasting about and having a nervous breakdown about. The Bible says... Whoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. This is the faith that moves God to act. Unfortunately, some of you are looking at the circumstances and how bad the situation looks and how the odds are stacked against. If the odds are stacked against, that's normal. Your faith cannot act if the odds are in your favor. Look at what Joseph did. He focused on the dream that God gave him. Even when he was betrayed by his brothers, even when he was lied on, even when he was locked up in prison. He just focused on the word he got from his dream. He had enough faith to know, to focus on the dream God had given him. And what I'm trying to get across to you today is stop focusing on your circumstances. Stop focusing on what other people are saying to you. Stop focusing on the current economic state of the world. Stop listening to haters. All you need to do is hold on to the word of God and fight the fight of faith. Your faith may be going through a test. Do not give up. God is in it. Your faith may be going through refining. Do not give up. God is in it. Have faith in God. Jeremiah 17, 7. 
Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. It is a blessing to trust in the Lord when things do not add up. It is a blessing to trust in the Lord when things are well. Have faith in God. Have faith in God in all seasons. When it comes to faith, you have to do your part. And your part is to believe it's yours. Jesus' part is to see that you have it. There is a space between believing you receive it and you shall have it. It's in that space in between that people have to fight the fight of faith. As when you have to hold over. That space between believing you receive it and you having it for Joseph was 14 years. And look at the struggles he had to go through during that space. But Joseph did not give up. He had to fight the fight of faith just like you will have to. And let me tell you the truth about the fight of faith. You're going to be hit and attacked by stuff consistently just like Joseph. And those things are going to tell you it's not going to work. It's not going to come to pass. That door is not going to open. Give up on that dream. You're not going to win. Your healing will never come. You're too old to get married. You're too old for kids. Your business cannot come back from this. Time is running out for you. You're too old. In the battle, that is when you need to fight the good fight of faith. That's where you need to hold on, to refuse to give up. That is where your faith must stand for you. Whatever season you are currently in, I want to encourage you to have faith in God. Regardless of how the odds may look against you, have faith in God. Sometimes in life, things just don't make sense. We go through things we just don't understand or expect, but thank God for Romans 8.28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. You will not be defeated. You will not be overcome. You will not give up. God is with you. Have faith in God. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who is the author and finisher of faith. God can do exceedingly and above all that we can ask or think. It may look like your mountain is standing still and it's getting bigger, but I'm telling you, if you have said to it, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and you have not doubt in your heart, it will move. It may look like your mountain is standing still and it's getting bigger, but I'm telling you that if you have said to it, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and you have no doubt in your heart, it will move. Victory is on the way. Don't look at your trouble. Don't look at your mountains. Look at the word of God.